everyone, and welcome to the MFG Advocate. I'm Penny Brown of AMT, the Association for Manufacturing Technology. Today, I'm talking to Dr. Lonnie Love, who's with the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. How are you today? You're doing great. So, you know, maybe not everybody knows that there's this whole national lab system. What's that about? What are the missions there? Yeah, so the Department of Energy and the Department of Defense have a number of labs that uh, peppered all over the United States and they have anywhere from 3,000 to 4,000 engineers and scientists working on a number of different problems. Oak Ridge's primary focus is in materials and characterization and so we've seen ourselves as really trying to bring science to manufacturing, developing a lot of scientific tools to help U.S. manufacturers become more competitive worldwide. So what specific areas are you focusing on with manufacturing? Okay, a, a lot of the uh, two of the fundamental areas are additive manufacturing and, and also carbon fiber and composites. We see those as, as emerging trends that can really have a major impact on U.S. competitiveness. Tell us a little more about carbon fiber. We're hearing a lot about this lately. What are some of the applications for that? So one of the big ones is automotive. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're trying to do is work with a lot of the big OEMs, the Fords, the Volkswagens, to try to, to, try to reduce the weight of the car. And to do that, carbon fiber is one of the keys. We're trying to get standard cars to have an average gas mileage of about 40, 54 miles per gallon. And to do that, you either have to go to all electric or you have to lightweight the car. And so one of the keys for carbon fiber for automotive is low cost, trying to get the cost of carbon fiber to where a car company can buy it and use it on, say, a Ford Focus or a Volkswagen Jetta rather than a 787 or a high-end car. We want mass production of the material for mass distribution on general cars. So obviously you're doing some partnership there with yeah. some really big, you know, private industry companies. Right. And so at AMT, you know, we very much advocate for uh, business and government partnership. Right. What do you really think are the benefits of those kinds oh, of things? Oh, it's a win-win. Uh, so from our perspective, we're researchers, we're scientists trying to push the envelope on emerging trends. But for us to just work in a silo uh, is useless. We really need industrial partners to come to us and work with us on two things. Number one... Uh, manufacturers know what the real problems are. I'm a researcher, I, I'm a good problem solver, but I need to understand the problems first. So having a, a company come work with us side by side, telling us what problems they have, and then us leveraging the billions of dollars of investment in terms of scientific tools to help them is a key. And also they're the conduit for us to get ideas out. We can develop things, but unless we have an industrial partner that wants to sell the products, uh, it's useless. So beyond the process things that you work on at Oak Ridge, what else are you doing in terms of manufacturing workforce development? So one of the things that's been really exciting, especially when you start talking about manufacturing, is we need to get kids excited about careers in manufacturing. There's a big push on STEM, science and technology and, and in, in engineering and mathematics, but we want another M. We want manufacturing. And, and what we're finding is additive is really a, a, a bait for kids. They come in, they get excited, they understand 3D printing, but what they'll find rapidly is, well, it doesn't work for everything, and so they start going into our shop and working on lathes, working on mills. So it's really the, the bait that gets them in, teaches them about where manufacturing is going, but they still have to have that anchor of understanding how do you make stuff. Because honestly, we as a country, in terms of uh, high school education, uh, middle school education, we've gotten completely away from that. We don't have machine shops in schools anymore. So the whole 3D printing revolution, to me, one of the key benefits is it's inspiring kids to go into manufacturing. Outside of kids, are you doing any work with veterans? Yes, we had a program last summer where we had 25 vets come in, 25 vets and wounded warriors, and we trained them for six weeks, uh, teaching them about design, about materials, about composites and additive manufacturing. And at the end of that six weeks, we had a, a, uh, probably about 14, 15 companies come in to hire them. And what you find is the veterans are they're kind of the perfect workforce for manufacturing. They're, they're very focused. They follow instructions. Uh, they have their marching orders. They know how to, how to deliver. And, uh, and so my, my best technicians are Marines, absolutely the best. So we're trying to show that right now, this is what a lot of people don't understand. We, we talk about hundreds of thousands of open manufacturing jobs. We have 10,000 active duty military members entering the civilian workforce every month. 
every wow. month. Mm -hmm. So can we connect the dots? Can we create a mechanism by which we can use their VA benefits to give them some training and then direct them towards manufacturing jobs, much like we did after World War II? So I know you guys were involved in the Strati build at IMTS. Very exciting, world's first 3D printed car. But I know you've done another exciting thing recently where you 3D printed a Shelby Cobra. Can you tell us about that? So the, the Strati was the very first 3D printed car. Really exciting, working with an innovative company like Local Motors to try to push it forward. After IMTS, we were asked by the Department of Energy, you know, there's some other issues that we want, they want to see us address. Surface finish, uh, light weighting, uh, there's a lot of talk about crashworthiness. So we, we had a six week, very aggressive program to go from having absolutely nothing to having a, a really nice car. And so, so for six weeks, we, for a week we did the design. And the design was really interesting. We had three engineers, myself and two other guys said, well, on the body, what do we want it to look like? And so we said, well, we'll do an internal contest and see who makes the prettiest car. And, and what we determined is we all sucked. We were terrible. <laughs> and so we said, well, what's a really beautiful car? And the, and the Cobra was it. It was the one that's an iconic vehicle. And so we, it took us about a week to do the design, a week to do the printing, another week to assemble things together, about two weeks to do the final finish. And then uh, the final week was getting the instrument panels in and everything. So six weeks from start to finish of making a, a full car. It's so really it, was, great. it was a lot of fun. And you got a visit from our president. <laughs> yes, we had, uh, that was really a lot of fun too. So we had the president and vice president come in. And the funniest part was the Secret Service coming in and saying, okay, we got to Biden proof the car. You know, we don't want the president <laughs> and vice president to jump in the car. The vice president, he'll go rogue on us. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It was real on. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Lonnie. It was really good talking to you. Great. This has been Penny Brown for the MFG Advocate. Be sure to check out our blog at mfgadvocate.com.